In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the scene gizmo. Now that is this really cool, funny looking block and cone shape that has been hiding up here in the upper right corner of your scene viewport. Yeah, it looks like a toy I used to have as a kid. I think I had that same toy. But what this allows you to do is to switch between your perspective view and your orthographic views. So if you want to look directly down an axis, say to get like an elevation view as you would on a set of blueprints, you can do that. If you want to get a perfect depthless top-down view, so that you know, kind of looking down on a set of blueprints, you can do that as well. And it's as easy as clicking these cones that surround the outside of the gizmo. So for instance, if we click on the y-axis, which by the way is our up and down axis here inside of Unity, we're looking straight down on the world. Now we have no more depth. We've switched over from a pers view to, or perspective view to a top view, as you can see here in the upper right corner of the view. Now I'm going to zoom out, which I could do either by holding down the Alt key and dragging with my right mouse button. Also known as dollying. Uh, yeah, also, yeah, it's dollying, not really <laughs> zooming. I know, I told people I was going to do that. Or you can roll your mouse wheel to, uh, to dolly in and out. Now if you drag with the middle mouse button, you can pan around. And again, this is like a perfect top-down view. There is no vanishing point. Right. There's no sense of perspective whatsoever. And we can click on any one of the axes and look at our world straight down that axis. And here's a great example of the depth. You'll notice all of the trees right now appear to be the exact same size relative to one another because, again, we have no sense of depth, just like you would if you had some mechanical blueprints. Right. But these orthographic views are awesome for precision placement of objects in your scene. If you've got something that you need to line up perfectly along a plane that is in your scene, this is the view that you want. If you've got another object you need to get this close to, these are the views that you want to use to get that done with. Absolutely. I mean, if we had a level that was uh, a bit more architectural in nature and not quite so organic, you know, putting things specifically on walls or right down on the floor, it's a lot easier to do that sort of thing if you use one of the orthographic views. Now, if you want to jump back, all you have to do is click on the cube in the middle, and this takes you back to a perspective view, which we can see now has depth because the trees that are really close to us are huge. Some can even fill the entire viewport while the ones in the distance get small again. Now I do want to mention this, if you are in one of the orthographic views, you can still tumble the view by holding down alt and dragging with left mouse. And what you've just created is an isometric view. This has no depth, but you can look at it from other angles. So again, all of the trees are the same size relative to one another. It is kind of disturbing to look at if you're not if you're used to perspective view and you look at this for the very first time, it is disorienting. Mm -hmm. But it can be useful if you like, say for instance, you're looking right down the x-axis and you're trying to place something, but there's another object in your way, you can just kind of tilt things a little bit and get the other object kind of to move over so that you can slide it where it needs to go. There's all kinds of ways you can apply this. There it, is a neat effect though. If you put this at about a three quarter above angle. Like so? It may look like some older games that uh, you may have played in the past. That is called a three-quarter isometric perspective. That's true. And a lot of games use that type. So if you were trying to make something, oh, let's say a Diablo-style mm -hmm. game. Use uh, Diablo-style, he said with finger quotes. Of course. Yes. And you can use this to your advantage so that when you take those images to use as your basis... Uh, you don't have the, the problem of depth creating any parallax issues. Mm -hmm. It can uh, save you a lot of hassle. The big reason I bring it up, though, is that if you're not used to working this way, it can be very confusing because you might have accidentally clicked one of these and started to rotate around, and then all of a sudden it feels like you don't really understand what's going on in your views. I've seen so many people who are getting started, uh, especially in 3D programs uh, such as Max or Maya or even Unity, lose track, and then they'll PM me or email me in a panic saying, my viewports look wrong. And you know, because they're not used to this, they, they don't really know what, how to say it. So make sure if things are lacking depth, you just click on your little cube here and go back to your standard perspective view. So that is a quick rundown of the view cube. Do you have anything else? Or it's not the view cube. That's what it's called in Maya. Excuse me. It's actually the uh, scene gizmo. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to throw out? The only thing is if any of you noticed, we did get an error that popped up. That's just an anomaly inside of the editor. Yeah, it's, it's no big deal. Nothing that uh, really concerns us. I just, but, yeah, good idea pointing that out. So that is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.